my brother and I, we always had the land that we inherited from our grandparents, but we hadn't had a chance to utilize that. And it's something that always was burning inside me was, you know, we've had the opportunity to, to have land, but how do we use it? So I spent a bit of time soul searching, traveling, trying to find what it was. All the roads led me back to Grenada to be like just using what's on that on the land, but adding value to it. And I think that was where I wanted to take advantage of that fact that we have these great war products that when I was growing up in England, I couldn't find them readily available. And it was like, how can I then use what I have on the land to then add value to that product and then create a product and then export that off the island to one, benefit my family, those within the community and build a sustainable business that could then help those further afield within St Andrews and, and wider communities. There's been multiple challenges along, along the way, whether it's, you know, people not necessarily being as open with advice and support, um, me having to learn a lot of what I have achieved on my own and by networking and hustling to get that information from people to help me achieve what I needed whether it's through the making process or learning about maintaining the land and the certain trees that work with certain crops that I have and soil testing and certain things that wasn't as easy for me to get my hands on to enable me to get to the point where I am today so you know I kind of used many many books many many resources people from Trinidad I kind of had to lean on for their support um, at the Cocoa Association and yeah that's kind of where I've kind of got the support that I've needed but it has been a struggle kind of along the way but hey I knew that at the beginning so I knew it wasn't going to be an easy road to turn you know nearly an acre's worth of land into something that people would want to come and visit and experience and tour and use the ingredients and the raw materials on that land to then create a great product. In January 2019 we're going to be rolling out our tours so over the last two years that we've participated in the Grenada Chocolate Festival by listening and hearing many of the people who have come to the tour and just people who have asked me on Facebook or via telephone to come to the farm because they've heard about what I'm doing um, I've just learned from them and heard from them I think you have a certain amount of tourists who will come and stay and spend their time on the beach and that's totally fine you have a large proportion of tourists that actually want to get away from the beach or get off the cruise ship and meet people and get their hands dirty and really taste things and smell things and drink things and that's one of the things that we are creating here at Trial and Chocolate is giving people a chance to come to the farm see where food comes from have a chance to taste our honey so really get involved in honey tasting and then also tasting our chocolate so they'll come here and they'll pretty much go away with the experience of tasting one of the best chocolates in the world and also some of the best honey in the world all in one place it's taken us three years to get to the point where we are today so I guess because of the effort, because of the work that has to go into producing chocolate, this is a meticulous thing that's not, there's not just a machine that can do all of this. You know, most of it is done with these fair hands. So because of that, we, we are a premium chocolate producing company. So we don't have the luxury of a, a Cadbury's or a Nestle where we have huge machines that can purchase beans from Ivory Coast, bring them in and then just make chocolate. Everything is done here. So when we have a good harvest, we have a bit more cocoa to work with so we can produce, produce more chocolate. If we don't, which is happening year after year due to climate change, we have less. So because of that, we have a unique product that we can only produce a unique amount. The luxury that we have in Grenada is that not all Caribbean countries actually can grow cocoa. As much as people do believe they can, there isn't that many. So for me, I have a strong focus on the first 12 to 18 months to just focus, yes, on Grenada for the first 12 months and then beyond that, start to make our way up the island chain. From my research, there is a demand for, for different flavours and different chocolates, as much as just from a different island, because you have certain individuals who appreciate fine flavoured products. We create one of those, being chocolate. So for me, that was the first destination to go to. And beyond that, there is, we've had a lot of interest from Asia. But, you know, we have a wider plan is to empower local farmers, particularly in St Andrews, where my grandparents are from, and to help those farmers to, to realise that, yes, they have cocoa, but that cocoa doesn't always just have to be given away as a commodity. That cocoa can be used to create a product, add value to that product, whether it's cocoa beans dipped in honey with a sprinkle of cinnamon, then dried, put it into a bag, and you have a great tasting product. And I think that's just one. But there's so many other things that we've got that we could utilize. And for me, it's empowering those farmers and those individuals that feel they can't make it out there, that they can, they just have to think differently.